Let's look at the motion problem and assume gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, minus sign because gravity pulls down. With what velocity must an object be thrown from a height of 50 meters to reach a maximum height of 150 meters? So the very first thing I do before anything else, let's sketch the picture. So the idea is on the top of some building, we're 50 meters high. We're going to throw an object. It's going to go up to 150 meters, and then it's going to come back down. So one of the first things I can do also is I can start writing out my general equations. The acceleration, which is the second derivative, is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared is given. My velocity which is the antiderivative of the acceleration. So that's going to be f prime. Take the antiderivative of minus 9.8. That's a constant, so I just add in a t because our variable's time. And then I add the constant c1. To get my position function, that's the antiderivative of f prime. That gives me f. So the antiderivative of minus 9.8t that's just t to the 1, so I add 1, which gives me t squared. Flip the 2 over, cuts the 9.8 in half to 4.9. c1 is a constant, so that picks up a t. And then we throw in another constant, c2. So this will be the set of equations we have to deal with. Let's look back at our picture. Well, what we're trying to find is where we hit the maximum height. So the idea is, if I take something and I throw it up, what happens? It goes up, but to change direction, it has to stop. It stops, and then it starts moving back down. So if I'm stopped up here, that means my velocity is equal to zero. So that's what we're trying to do. We want to use our equations of motion to find the constant on the velocity equation. What else are we given? Well, when we start out at time equals zero, we're at 50 meters high. So that's going to be S sub zero equals 50. But also notice, going to the position equation, if we put zero in here, everything goes away but C2. So we get for free that C2 is equal to 50. What else do I have? Well, we're interested in a special time, which I'll call Tm. T sub m is going to be the time when we reach maximum height. So we also have the equation when we're at the time of maximum height, the velocity is zero. And we also have at the time of maximum height, the position is 150. Unraveling my first equation, that's going to say 0 equals minus 9.8 T sub m plus C1. But if I solve for T sub m, I'm going to get C1 over 9.8. I look at my second equation. This is going to tell me 150 equals minus 4.9 t sub m squared plus c1 t sub m plus 50. I can move everything over to one side to get this equation. So it's 4.9 t sub m squared minus c1 tm plus 100 equals 0. And now I'm going to take the first equation the result from that and stick it into this equation here. What that's going to give me is, okay, well, you follow your nose, you crunch the numbers, and you see that C1 squared is 1960 meters squared per second squared. I could take the square root of C1. That gives me two answers, a positive and a negative 44.3 meters per second. Now note, we only want the positive one. We're asking for a maximum height which means we're throwing it up. If I throw it straight down, the maximum height is actually going to be the point where I'm throwing from. So I throw away the negative solution, and we're left with the solution C1 equals 44.3 meters per second. And so that's my answer. That's the velocity that gets me a maximum height of 150 meters. We can check all our work still. So note, I'm going to solve for Tm. That's going to give me roughly 4.5. If I stick Tm into the velocity equation, we just follow our nose with the 44.3 in for C1. That's going to give you 
roughly zero, so we're in the ballpark there. If I put it into the position function, we get what we get. Okay, so that's going to be 4.5 squared in there, 4.5. Remember, we solved for 44.3 and 50. And when you crunch that, you're going to get roughly 150, which is also what we would expect.